Joan Jett on CJCY. Good morning, 8.06. Steve and Warren in the Car Star Collision and Glass Studio. Johnny Boy off this week. We'll talk to him on Monday. It is the second Wednesday of the month, which means Lisa from the Chamber of Commerce joins us to talk business. How are you, Lisa? I'm doing well, as Good. always. Excellent. Well, we're going to start out with some happy news today. <laughs> we'll start happy, get into the serious stuff, and maybe end on a happy note. We're okay? going to make it a sandwich. <laughs> yeah, a happy sandwich. A happy sandwich with <laughs> we'll... all the heavy stuff in the middle. <laughs> That's right. Well, there is some stuff we need to bring up. It's like a chamber burger. A ch- there you go. <laughs> we're dubbing this segment the chamber burger. First of all, let's talk uh, new members because you always have people coming on board. Yeah, we have well over 760 members. And some of our new members that we've highlighted recently are the Hell's Basement Brewery, which is such a great news story. So exciting, uh, yeah. For our community. Yeah, craft brew- brewing is always mm-hmm. something we want to promote here. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, the Medicine Hat Soccer Association. Mm -hmm. which is fantastic. Apple Blossoms Day Home and Booster Juice in the FLC in the New Family Leisure Center came on board. Okay. So we're pleased to have those guys on board. On that note, when it comes to chamber fees... No increases coming up uh, next year. That's right. Our board decided that businesses are getting these compounding costs from every level of government, and we didn't want to add to that. So we do have a policy that we're supposed to keep up with inflationary costs, and Mm -hmm. generally every couple of years we increase by 5%, and we said, you know, we'll we'll increase by 5% to adhere to our policy, but we're actually going to discount that back off and, and keep our fees the same. Okay, getting- and there's no increases in trade shows or events, any of that this year. It's businesses just can't increase, <laughs> handle any more costs from any anywhere else. So absolutely, yes. Yeah, you mentioned the trade show there, and you have your next one coming up in October. October, uh, what is it, the 21st to 23rd? Mm-hmm. Yeah. We have over 180 booths sold. For already? Fall. Already. Three and 158 away. booths sold for spring next March 2017. <laughs> so it's been fantastic. The response is great. I think businesses are still looking for ways to market themselves and get out mm-hmm. uh, to to get some exposure from you know that consumer base that we have. And we always get, you know, fall show Anywhere from eight to ten thousand. Spring yeah. is anywhere, you know, typically from nine to twelve thousand people through the door. So, mm-hmm. most businesses have more sales over that weekend yeah. than they do in a good portion of the year. So it's fantastic. So, one hundred and eighty tables already booked. How many more people can you squeeze in there? We have three hundred and fifty-five booths. Okay. I think total booth spaces. So yeah, we're over half. Don't count me on my math. We're not quite halfway It's 8 there. o'clock in the morning. Yeah. No problem. Basically, if people want to get in on it, they need they to get a hold of you can. now. Absolutely. It's oh. a great time to, to get in and make sure that you get your space that you want because there's definitely, like anything, those prime spots. Okay, so trade show is October 21st to 23rd. Just a few days before that, though, is the uh, Chamber Business Awards. Absolutely. We Once we hit September, it's, you know, all hands on deck, full throttle. Uh, and October 14th is our Business Awards. We're celebrating and, and commemorating the military base's mm-hmm. 75th uh, anniversary. That's right. Which we've kind of carried throughout this year. And so we'll have a, a military theme to tie into that and a salute to business. And that salute goes out to over 130 nominees this year, which is fantastic. Wow. How many did you have last year? Do you remember? Oh, Steve, come on. Oh, I just want to put you on the spot. I like doing that. It was, uh, I think it was around that 100 mark, 105. Oh, so you got a lot more this year. Yeah, we definitely have more this year. That much I know. Okay, excellent. (laughs) Tickets? When you can get tickets? Uh, so we're going to be doing a press release in the very near future okay. that will list all the nominees, and that's when tickets will go on sale. Excellent. And uh, one more happy note here. You have your Business After Five coming up uh, not next week, but the week after the 26th. Look at you, all full of good cheer and stuff. <laughs> get all the good stuff in right away. Yeah, July 26th. Uh, the Business After Five will be at Cypress College. Okay. So it would be a fantastic opportunity to go down, check out uh, their space and the services they have to offer. But even more than that, food and drink and <laughs> a good time is always, I think, more than welcome for a lot of people. Uh, and then following that, so if the After Five isn't quite your, your gig or you have a lot of things going on in the evening, you can come out to our network before nine, which alternates with our Business After Five. Mm-hmm. And that's going to be at Anytime Fitness, I believe, on August. 18th. Okay. So. And these are for members and non-members, correct? Potential members. Potent- oh, sorry. Members.
members and potential members. Potential because, members. You know, there's a lot of businesses in the city that, you know, we truly do feel that we can help, and uh, it's just a matter of getting to know them and kind of. We say we're kind of a business matchmaking service, so <laughs> you know, we we truly want to find out about business needs and and a little bit about each business and how we can assist them and help them uh, kind of benefit that bottom line. Okay. Well, there's some happy news to get your That's 8 o'clock hour started. <laughs> so, uh, Lisa from the Chamber of Commerce, we'll take a quick break. Uh, we'll kind of switch gears when we come back. Hey, son, what are you... 814, let's take a look at weather. Brought to you by the Thai Orchid Room, Medicine Ant's premier destination for authentic Thai cuisine. Check out their full menu at thaiorchidroom.ca, located in the Strachan Court. Cloud? Showers and thunder showers. That's your next uh, day and a half or so here, folks. Uh, looking for a high today of 24 degrees. We'll dip down overnight to a low of 10 tomorrow, up to 24 once again. Right now, we're seeing no rain on Friday, so that's kind of good news. 22, but rain on the weekend, high of 19 and 23, respectively. Right now, Medicine Hat, it is mostly cloudy and 16 degrees. Thank you, Warren. We're back with Lisa Kowalchuk, Executive Director of the Medicine Hat and District Chamber of Commerce. She joins us every second Wednesday of the month. All right, we got some light, fluffy stuff out of the way. Let's let's get to the real hard-hitting stuff, if you would. All we, the cholesterol in the middle, right? Yeah, yeah, but this is important stuff because there is a minister in town tomorrow on important business. Absolutely. So we have Minister Danielle Lervy, who is the Minister of Municipal Affairs, mm-hmm. and she's coming down to talk uh, everything Municipal Government Act. Obviously, we've been going through the uh, MGA review for... It's been going on for about four years now, okay. and they're hoping to to get this all passed uh, before the municipal elections next year. Okay. So they've obviously passed the bill. They're getting, you know, doing a, a cross-province tour, getting input and feedback, look at some amendments that they may have to make, and um, we'll see, see what results. So one of the things that really did surprise me is, I mean, the MGA is a massive, massive piece of legislation. And that's the Municipal Government the, Act. Yeah, MGA is a Municipal Government Act. And there was a lot of recommendations that came forward okay. through the What We Heard document and, and consultations with organizations like ours. And so one of the things that did surprise me is there was very little that that changed, but you know, some of the changes that they are making are, are fairly significant. Okay. So the the biggest thing and, and what we say is, you know, the devil's in the details. So it's not so much the legislation but the regulations um, and and some of the policies that they they enact or, or put in place that um, will be the guiding documents where the details will be. In a nutshell, what does it kind of cover, like uh, the elections of... It, yeah, it covers um, essentially what municipalities can do, the power they hold, uh, things like um, intermunicipal development plans, working with you know bordering regions, deals with things like off-site levies. Uh, they, one of the platforms of, of this government was inclusionary housing, so it talks a little bit about that. So some of those types of things, how municipalities can be funded, how they can collect funds. It's all fun stuff. Okay. <laughs> was this one of the stops you had to make sure they were coming to Medicine Absolutely. Hat? Absolutely. Because yeah, we, we were left we, out. <laughs> for whatever reason, governments uh, now in the, in the past seem to you know, miss Medicine Hat on their radar. They they figure we're close enough to Lethbridge that we can just attend sessions there. So we've had a pretty resounding voice and very loud voice in terms of, you know, don't forget about Medicine Hat. We are unique. We mm-hmm. aren't Lethbridge. We have, you know, a different dynamic here. And we do represent the southeast uh, corner of the province with the re- you know the communities surrounding mm-hmm. us. So we were pleased to see that they were coming to Medicine Hat, and we do hope that there's a good representation uh, for the review session and the consultation tomorrow. All right, excellent. Switching gears now, uh, we seem to always talk about this because it's such a huge issue, and that's the minimum wage in Alberta. And we did have you guys did a. a a news conference not that long ago when they announced they were moving forward. And I think it was uh, President Krista Vogt of the Chamber who said it feels like some of the recommendations that have been made to the province have fallen on deaf ears. Yeah, it was really frustrating. So the announcement was made on June 30th. We had, we've attended consultations and been involved in the process since May 
last year mm-hmm. when they initially announced they would they would be making this move forward. Uh, everything from creating a policy that was adopted at the Alberta Chamber level to several trips to Edmonton, yeah. Calgary. Um, on behalf of our chamber to letters and and uh, advocacy and roundtable. So we've been really involved uh, in in really finding the facts and the details and how it's impacting bi- business. And we, I went up to Calgary on June 6th for their minimum wage consultation up there. Uh, that following weekend, the NDP had their, their party um, conference in, uh, I believe it was Calgary, and there was an announcement by... Uh, Premier Notley that they would be moving forward uh, to mm-hmm. 15 by 2018. And it was kind of a, a defeating statement in the sense of what are we doing all these consultations for if you're not listening to the impacts yeah. and the unintended consequences that are going to be a result of this. There's a lot of data and a lot of information and and our hope was this wouldn't be politicized that it would be dealt with through logic and fact and that there would be open dialogue on options and certainly we're not opposed to ending poverty. We just, we had provided several recommendations in terms of how we could do that and how we could work together. And so it really felt like, you know, all that time was for naught and and truly, you know, that that's not how governments should govern. It should be a process that in, is inclusive of all Albertans and takes into consideration impacts to Albertans. Okay. What's the feedback been like from local business? Is there anything you can share about what they're saying? It's not good. No. <laughs> it's, you know, in a nutshell, people are really frustrated. Mm-hmm. And I don't know if you can tell my voice or <laughs> people can't see my face right now. It's, it's frustrating. You know, the compounding costs that government is is putting onto the backs of business. It's incredible. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely a frustration on your face. I can vouch for that. Okay. Uh, we'll take a, a short break here. More with Lisa Kowalczuk from the Chamber after this. BTO on CJCY. You ain't seen nothing yet. Steve, Warren, and Lisa in the Car Star Collision and Glass Studio. Lisa Kowalchuk from the Medicinat and District Chamber of Commerce joins us every second Wednesday. We were just talking about minimum wage. A uh, frustrating topic, as, as you will attest to, Lisa. But something that might be compounding that is changes to a uh, Canadian pension plan. Absolutely. So we talked a little bit about compounding costs to business. So minimum wage is just one lever Mm -hmm. uh, that they're dealing with. They're also, you know, the CPP, the carbon tax, increasing taxes. It's, you know, when governments are making decisions, they're not taking into account those compounding costs because businesses aren't in isolation and only responsible to one government. Mm -hmm. They're impacted by three levels of government uh, on costs. And businesses only have a certain margin (laughs) that they're dealing with in terms of of profitability. And and businesses do want to be fair and they want to pay, you know, I guess there's a different interpretation for fair share by everybody. But, um, you know, they want to pay fair wages and they want to ensure that their employees are taken care of. The, the challenge is, of course, there is only a certain margin that they have to, to work with. Yeah. And once that's depleted, then they have to consider, you know, either cutting back hours, laying off staff. And we've seen enough layoffs yeah. over the course of the last year um, and looking at how do they sustain that business over the long over the long term if if these costs keep compounding so you know it's it's not any one thing it's it's all of those items coupled together and and we really are pushing to have that strong voice of business heard um i heard a quote ontario is actually dealing with similar things and i was reading an article um by one of the chambers out there uh just last week and and their campaign is small business is too big to ignore. Mm -hmm. I thought, how true, (laughs) right? I mean, small businesses make up over 90% of the employers uh, in the province and in the country. And um, we really have to pay attention to to how it impacts them to make sure that those small businesses can grow and sustain in our local economy. All right. Let's end on one happy note here. We have uh, just a bit more time left. Uh, Talk to us about uh, is it the president of the Alberta Chamber of Commerce? Yeah. So one of the things, you know, we always tout that 
you know, we try our best to be the voice of business and to make sure businesses are heard. And our president and CEO of the Alberta Chambers, Ken Colby, was named to Alberta Ventures Top 50 Most Influential People in 2016. And Ken has really been a strong advocate, obviously, for businesses across this region, representing 125 chambers and 24,000 businesses in this province. So it's really nice to see him, him make those top ranks. All right. We are plumb out of time. Thank you so much, Lisa, for joining us as usual every second Wednesday of the month. Have yourself a good day. You too. Thanks for having me. News coming up next.